Hello there. A lot of you guys who uh, know me also know people like uh, James, DVD Collector 1974, and Ian, aka Forkerball, and some of the other people who do these midweek chat videos. I haven't done one in like a couple of months, and um, I liked uh, some of the topics, or at least one of them, uh, from uh, this week, and so I wanted to do sort of a makeup for. Uh, I've sort of kept track of a few of the uh, questions that have been asked, and so I thought I'd ask them all in one big long video like this one. Um, I talked a little bit about Blu-rays and things like that and things that I don't own. <laughs> um, but they, um, James in his video did talk a little bit about remakes um, and how we feel about them. Um, there are some remakes that I like very much. Um, three in particular, two by Martin Scorsese, one by David Cronenberg, are among my favorite movies of all time. Um, but yes, there are lots of really lousy ones. I'm not opposed to remakes on principle, but there are some movies that I really don't want to see remade because I don't want them to be overshadowed by something newer. And, um, you know, in the case of movies like Robocop and Total Recall, <laughs> they were not overshadowed. The originals were not overshadowed. I, I don't think nearly as many people are interested in seeing the remakes as they are uh, the new ones. Um, but, yeah, like I said, The Departed, Cape Fear, The Fly, these are remakes which are great. Um, and uh, so I'm not opposed to them in principle, but uh, yeah, there are some movies that uh, just shouldn't be remade because uh, they mean too much to me. You know, I don't want to see Seven get remade. You know, that, that would really stink. Um, so uh, one of the questions was, are there any remakes you refuse to see? Um, well, I can tell you that the worst remake I've ever seen probably is the remake of John Carpenter's Halloween. Rob Zombie did it. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. And there are some that I've just ignored not necessarily because I refused to see them, because the ones that I'm most opposed to, I ended up seeing anyway just to satisfy my curiosity. Like Total Recall, I did go to see it. I did see the remake of Robocop. Didn't like them all that much, um, but I just couldn't say that they were terrible without actually having seen them firsthand. That just wouldn't be honest. Um, there are plenty of remakes I've just ignored. Like, for example, Russell Brand and Arthur. Haven't seen that one. Um, haven't seen the uh, remake of Nightmare on Elm Street with Jackie Earl Haley and Rooney Mara. I'm kind of curious about it just because the two of them are in it, but I don't expect anything great. Especially since, you know, there's a whole series of Robert Englund movies. How many movies have we got with Jackie Earl Haley as Freddy Krueger, huh? One. <laughs> Not likely to change anytime soon. So, um, yeah. Uh, you know, that's sort of like um, uh, another question was asked earlier about reboots. Ian asked the question whether or not, uh, what we, how we feel about reboots. And with something like Star Trek, it works very well, and obviously it's becoming a new series. Um, but a lot of these horror remakes, it seems like, um, except with Texas Chainsaw, um, are intended to be reboots, but they end up just being remakes of one movie. It's not like you've got a brand new Friday the 13th series or a brand new Nightmare on Elm Street series. We've had just two new Halloween movies uh, by Rob Zombie, so um, yeah, it doesn't look especially promising. Um, uh, for uh, for the whole reboot uh, idea as far as those movies go. Um, but uh, the Star Trek uh, reboot works pretty well for me. You know, uh, it's not it's not the same as the original, um, but for what it is, it's a, you know, fun adventure in space. Um, at least the first one was. The second one I didn't like nearly as much. The first half was good, the second half I didn't really care for. I'm hoping that the next um, uh, Star Trek remake, with, uh, Star Trek film with that cast uh, will be a lot better than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, remakes that I want, um, you know, I had sort of a, you know, I, it was funny, last year I was watching, um, I watched Westworld for the first time, which is a 1973 movie, and I thought, gee, I'd really love to see something a little bit more, uh, spicier <laughs> as a remake. Wouldn't you know it, HBO a couple weeks ago announced they are going to be doing their own series based on Westworld, and I'm like, cool, that'll be great. I think that it's a good idea to do television series adaptations like that um, of novels, some of them anyway, like for example Watchmen, um, would have worked great as a 12 episode miniseries on HBO or something like that rather than trying to make it a two and a half hour film because uh, it couldn't, couldn't work the same way. Um, and also uh, there was a guy whose video I watched who was picking apart the Atlas Shrugged movies and how much great it would be to have basically uh, three four-hour movies. I'm like, mm, how about instead a 12-episode series? You know, that would be better. Um, he was talking about doing it animated, which uh, w which would be really cool. Um, but uh, but yeah, I can't think of too many movies that I want to see remade, um, except that they were kind of lousy. Um, and there's one particularly cheesy sci-fi movie called Free Jack with Emilio Estevez and Mick Jagger and Anthony Hopkins that uh, I thought would be 
good if they, you know, redid it and took the idea a little bit more seriously. Um, that was a long time ago. I'm not really uh, expecting, you know, remakes. Uh, you know, maybe take some of these PG-13 um, thrillers and horror movies or whatever and remake them as hard R movies, you know. I saw the remake of Evil Dead, um, and that had plenty of good blood in it, you know, lots and lots of good blood in it. But uh, is it a better movie? Not really, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of where I stand on that. It kind of depends on who's doing it, really. It depends on whether or not they've got good people behind the camera who are working on it. And the Robocop remake had, like, a really good cast in it, much better than the Total Recall remake. But, again, you know, it just doesn't hold up to the original because the original is something special, really. Paul Verhoeven, you can't beat him. Paul Verhoeven is just the best. Um, so, let me go back to some other um, questions that were asked in previous uh, chats. Three films I've not seen, unfortunately. This was uh, identify three particular movies that you haven't just gotten around to seeing, but you ought to. Um, and for me, one of these is the Maltese Falcon. I actually just watched my third Humphrey Bogart movie ever, uh, The Big Sleep. Um, I watched it for Lauren Bacall Week on the collab channel I'm a part of. Um, and this confirms my suspicion that uh, Humphrey Bogart is the coolest man that ever lived. <laughs> After seeing this in Casablanca, I'm like, yeah, he is awesome. So I need to see the Maltese Falcon. And there's a recent documentary that came out called An Act of Killing, which has gotten lots and lots of praise that I'm really excited uh, to see, but I'm also kind of worried about it. Um, you know, I, I figure it's going to be a huge downer, so I don't know whether or not um, that's something uh, that I'm going to enjoy or be disturbed by or whatever, but I know it's something that I ought to check out. I ought to give it a chance to. Um, there are lots of classic movies, of course, that I haven't seen, in particular Gone with the Wind, but I've never really been interested in seeing that movie, so I wouldn't count that one. Um, there's plenty of movies that I've skipped on their theatrical release. I never saw the Flintstones movie with John Goodman, but then again, I don't really want to see that one that badly either. Anything that I want to see, I've gotten around to seeing mostly, unless it hasn't, just hasn't come out yet. Um, so I really only came up with the two, but uh, yeah, there's plenty more, plenty of classic movies. Um, maybe a couple of Hitchcock movies, maybe a couple of, uh, like, oh, I, I, there's one in particular that I'm thinking of. Clint Eastwood's first film as a director, Play Misty for Me. Haven't seen that one. Good, that'll be my third. Play Misty for Me by Clint Eastwood. Um, another topic, uh, genres that I don't like. I can only think of two that I sort of dislike on principle. One of them is horror. And I've seen plenty of good horror movies, but for the most part, horror movies don't interest me because they seem, for the most part, kind of crudely made and just sort of, uh, you know, when I, uh, so many people on YouTube love horror movies, and it, it seems to come down to the special effects, the gore, the makeup, things like that. And I'm more interested in the story, you know, that kind of thing, characters, good acting, good writing. Um, see that occasionally in horror movies, but uh, not that often. Um, a lot of people um, mentioned that they don't like romantic comedies, that's their least favorite genre, and I gotta say, I'm mostly on board with that, but for me, romantic comedies, uh, are more character driven, they have a little bit more value than horror, for me personally. Um, but uh, yeah, there are plenty that are lousy, and uh, one person in particular who's been in lots of lousy romantic comedies, so I'm told, is Katherine Heigl. So I thought it would be fun to basically come up with uh, a little marathon of uh, Katherine Heigl movies instead of uh, watching a whole bunch of movies that I might like, a bunch of movies that I might potentially hate. I don't know what the point of that would be, but it might be fun. She's been in a bunch of them actually since she was in Knocked Up with Seth Rogen. She was with James Marsden in 27 Dresses, with Gerard Butler in The Ugly Truth. I wrote all these down here. Uh, Ashton Kutcher in Killers, that one's supposed to be especially terrible. Um, a movie called Life as We Know It with Josh Duhamel, that might actually be a drama, I'm not really sure. She was in the ensemble movie New Year's Eve. She was in One for the Money with um, a guy named Omera. I, I can't remember his first name. That, that's sort of appealing to me because she's trying to be a bounty hunter, so there's going to be some silly action in there as well. Um, the Big Wedding with Robert De Niro. Um, she's uh, in a couple of movies coming up. One of them is called North of Hell with Patrick Wilson. And she's actually in a lesbian romantic comedy uh, with Alexis Bedell called Jenny's Wedding. Um, so, uh, so yeah, those all look like they could be terrible. <laughs> um, so there are plenty of examples of movies that I wouldn't necessarily like. I'm not the biggest fan of musicals either, but I like them more just because I like music. Um, so there, you know, what do you know? I wasn't big on Hairspray or anything like that. Um, what's next? So those are genres that I, um, I'm not big on for the most part. Um, do I have a movie viewing ritual? Um, not especially. Um, you know, I, uh, I like to, you know, 
I don't have a really great sound system, and my TV, well, a good size is not, you know, enormous or anything like that. Um, and so the, my favorite place to watch movies is still the movie theater, because you get a big screen, you got plenty of surround sound, it's nice, the chairs are really comfortable. Um, <clears throat> as far as watching movies at home, I just basically make sure that I have something refreshing to drink. Uh, and then I'm not going to be disturbed. I tend to wear um, wireless headphones when I watch movies, so I'm not disturbing anyone else. But yeah, that's the extent of a ritual that I have. <clears throat> How do I feel about movie stars on, on television series? Um, great. You know, I mean, they're good actors. They belong on something that uh, really sort of um, uh, uh, shows what they can do. A lot of movies are short on character development. They're more interested in spectacle to appeal to foreign audiences, whereas TV is more character-driven, dialogue-driven. It's great for actors to do television. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing um, Viola Davis in her new show, um, which she plays a law professor. But yeah, you know, I mean, the more good actors they get on TV shows, the more likely people will be able to see them. And having, you know, big movie stars on a TV show can't be a bad thing. Um, of course, this means a depletion of movie stars on the big screen because, you know, they're just interested in franchises or whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. The better actors, you know, bankable movie stars, sure, yeah. Put them on TV. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, Ray asked a question in one of his videos. This isn't exactly a midweek chat video, but he was talking about, he, he had a couple of videos in which he would ask people questions. Um, so I thought I'd include this one. Is there any movie that you immediately rewatched after first watching it? You know, like right when it ended? And for me, that's The Goonies. Definitely The Goonies. My brother and I were home one night and we had rented the movie. We'd never seen it before. So we watched it. As soon as it was over, we were like, that was a lot of fun. Let's watch it again. So we watched the whole thing from the very beginning again. It had been talked up quite a bit by friends of ours. Um, other than that, um, I actually had a contest a couple years ago in which I asked people to recommend movies based on the premise that I would be watching them twice in a row. And uh, some of them didn't work out so well, but others actually kind of uh, were good that way. Um, the only other movie that I can think of is The Social Network. When it was over, when I first saw it in the theater, I went to the restroom and then I immediately went <laughs> and watched like the first half of it again just because I liked the dialogue so much and I just couldn't get enough of it. Um, Claire, Lunaria Claire, um, who uh, sometimes interacts with um, um, the uh, main guys in this Meet Weeks chat, she did a video uh, a while ago on performance capture and how she felt it gave the actors too much credit and the animators, the guys behind the scenes, not enough credit. And the more I read about Andy Serkis and the things that have been going on with the movies that he's been in, I have to say I have to agree with that. I've been giving the actors more credit than they deserve probably when I describe what performance capture is. Um, and uh, yeah, the animators have to do a lot of work once the, after the actor takes off his rig and uh, the suit with all the little, uh, little uh, markers on it and everything like that. Um, so yeah, totally, totally in agreement about that. Um, but performance capture is great for taking a character that requires too much makeup, or too much uh, uh, alteration of the human body, and giving it the um, uh, that that taste of human performance. You know, like Davy Jones, for example, in Pirates of the Caribbean. Bill Nye, he played him, and that character would not be the same, would not be as effective if it didn't have an actor you know, doing the body movements and doing the dialogue for the character itself. So that worked out great. That's probably my favorite example of performance capture is Davy Jones. So it's got its, its benefits, but also don't discount the animators because they got a lot of work to do on each one of those shots. So, yeah, I was actually watching a video the other day on CGI in movies and how long each of those shots takes to render. It takes forever. It takes so much information, so much uh, data to do. Um, yeah, it's a partnership, you know, and so uh, shortchanging one side over the other is, is not a good thing. Um, last question here um, that someone asked a while back, why am I a movie fan? Um, well, I like stories. I like stories. I like books. I like TV shows. I like jokes that are stories. Um, I like telling them. I like listening to them. And I like the, uh, the, uh, when a movie combines a good story with the spectacle, the great photography, the snappy editing, you know, the acting that's really good as well. Um, that's the most exciting thing for me, you know, and I get excited by the prospect of movies that I haven't seen that are by people that I like, or the prospect of seeing a movie that I have no idea what it's about and anything could happen. Um, that's, all, that's all really great. And I like television too, but television requires so much greater time commitment if you're watching an entire series. That's a big chunk of your own uh, spare time. And movies are like two hours, three hours, whatever. It's a complete story, whole and done. And um, that's one of the reasons why I don't like the Hunger Games that much or uh, the other series that like 
it's they're not like individual movies. It's just like part one, part two. It's like a big two and a half hour episode, and I prefer a movie to be its own thing, all in itself, a self-contained story, rather than just one in many parts of a story like that, because that makes it more like television to me, and uh, I'm not crazy about that. Um, yeah, so many movies, so many movies. I actually did um, uh, just post a video uh, on uh, my favorite, um, 100 favorite movies of all time. So that should give you a good example of the kind of stuff that I like. If you want to watch that too, because it's probably going to be a long video as well. <laughs> Thank you uh, for watching. I will include links to the other um, current um, midweek chats that I come across. Uh, at least one from Forkerball and one from James. I know they posted theirs already. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it very much. And as always, there's a link to my Facebook page where you can comment, give me feedback, and what have you. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much. See you.